Not as a whole group. Not as a whole group. But just in little in little drabs. <laughs> like you're a citizen. Yes. And a civilian. And a civilian. <laughs> All right, rest time. Anybody else need some water? Thanks for being here. <laughs> Seriously, thanks for being here. We need pleasure. everybody. My pleasure. How you doing? Not too bad. What's your name, sir? My name is Will. Nice to meet you. Will, you from New York? Yes, I am. All right. Glad to see New Yorkers out here. Yeah. It's good. We got a pretty diverse crowd out here from all over the world. Yeah. Here, down here. And yeah. yeah I, I was up at uh, Foley. Yesterday. Okay. Yeah, I was there for a little while. Did you? Yeah. Did yeah. you see the show or and everything? Uh, I saw some of it. Yeah. That's great. That yeah, was a nice day. Yeah. It was the only thing that was lacking was the there was no food or water there. But other than that, it was a good event. I mean, I bought this T-shirt yesterday there. You know, so. I bought a T-shirt there too. I like that. Yeah, it's got. Check out the back. Yeah, thanks. They even had them in double XL, my size, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm always looking for, I'd rather give my money to stuff like that than, and support the groups here than, you know, I'm on my vacation, I'm from San Francisco. Yeah, I came down here, I've been, I've been waiting like a year to be able to do this, right? Yeah, I've been over to Oakland, I was there the night that uh, Scott Olson got hit in the head with a tear gas canister. I was right there, I was like literally, like, like, see that guy in the orange shirt? I was like about that far away. <laughs> Oakland police are no joke. They're actually way worse than the San Francisco police. Like here, I've not seen any like outright like physical assault of people other than maybe tackling them to the ground. Right in New York, well in New York, I mean not in New York, in Oakland they'll they'll shoot you with rubber bullets and stuff. Right, they don't hesitate. Ten o'clock, we here. Yeah, we get the pepper spray. Oh, you get the pepper spray. Yeah, they don't tear gas people here, do they? Okay. Yeah, I guess there's too many people here. They don't do it in San Francisco either for the same reason that there's too many people and that, uh, you know, civilian. Yeah. You guys know. You guys know. Well, so far this has been a really good demonstration. I'm impressed by the people's street sense around here. They kind of know where they're going and what they're doing. So that's kind of nice. Good. Yeah, it's been good to be with experienced people. I got 41 years of activism and experience, right? Fighting the police. When I was younger, I was a holy terror, right? <laughs> Fighting the police. I've like been more than my few share of police officers. I was back in the day before uh, it was more fashionable to be uh, nonviolent, and we would escalate the level of uh, conflict uh, in uh, proportion to what the police were, were doing. That was our agreement. And uh, I got to the point in Berkeley, I was like lighting dumpsters on fire and pushing it at the police. At the police. Yeah. yeah, I burned more than my fair share of cops, more than my fair share of cop cars do. So, you know, I blew up, I blew up a cop car. Uh, I don't know about four months ago with a potato, right? Yeah, they had a command vehicle that was like parked in front of my house, like day after day. Because I live in the, I live in the like the poor streets of San Francisco, right? And so the cops are always out there pushing people around, and whatnot. And they had this mobile command vehicle that was put there after somebody got murdered. And it had been sitting there for like three months or four months. I got tired of looking. I take San Francisco's like here parking space is at a premium, right? And I knew the merchants appreciated it. So one night I was sitting out there and I just took a potato and tossed it up the exhaust pipe. And I'm pretty sure when they got four or five miles, I never saw that command vehicle again. That's how I know it was blown up. Right. After that day, there was no more command vehicles on 6th Street. So, yeah, I know, I, I got a kick out of it. But that's the way you deal with police vehicles. You know, you don't have to, like, break their windows or put sugar in the gas tank. Just take a potato and toss it right up the exhaust pipe.
Oh, yeah, is that the, the pressure in the engine builds up because the air is not coming out properly? Yeah, when you can't get the combustor gases out, you get the fresh gases. Right. 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 Gotta go right. And then they got. And then what happens usually is they throw a whole bunch of rods. But uh, we're not really into property destruction or anything like that. It was just, I don't know. I get tired of seeing it out in front of my house all the time. You know. Yeah, it's like a visible symbol of my oppression. But where I live, it's like, you know, you think San Francisco would be like a more of a level-headed place. Yeah, you know, it is in some ways, socially. In some ways, we're a little more progressive than New York. Uh, you know, because we, you know, we value our diversity in San, in, uh, San Francisco. Right. So, my name's Clark. Right. Yeah, if you're looking for me on the web, Freeman Sullivan. Freeman Sullivan. Freeman Sullivan. That's my last name, Sullivan. And uh, and then you can find everything about me. You can find my live stream. If you want to see yourself, yeah. you can come to my live stream and check it out. I archive all my videos for yeah. people to watch. Right? They get they get posted to YouTube after I'm done with them on, right? And uh, I really enjoy live streaming. That's why I came out. This is my way. Since I'm not like physically able to like move around like a lot of these folks are. Well, I got my here to help me. But uh, um, I decided I would start doing live streaming because I want to be able to protect people from the police department. And also, we can get the story out there in the world for other people. Right, so it's a, right. And I do a bunch of web stuff. I'm a web developer, network engineer. I do all kinds of stuff. I'm a computer guy. That's what I do. And I actually, um, I get paid to break into computer networks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, the police department really, really, if they were after me and they really, really wanted to give me a hard time, then uh, there would be holy hell unleashed on their computers. I'm pretty sure most of them would be destroyed. They'd have to replace all the hardware, too. But uh, that's totally, like, you know, anybody can, you know, all my live streams. I'm not, like, worried about getting caught or anything like that because you got to be fucking work pretty fucking, get up pretty fucking early in the morning. You know what I'm saying? You know, you can ask them. Well, Zen knows, like, I get up in the morning. Like, when somebody says they're getting up at 6, I'm up at 5.30, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't go to. I didn't go to. I didn't have been to bed tonight. I, since I'm here visiting, um, there's so many wonderful people. Yeah, and I'm like, I love to get in conversations. And I love talking to people. So I end up spending all night. I'm up all night talking, and then, you know, time rolls around, and I'm like, oh man, you know, I gotta, you know. But uh, today we made a special effort. I've been lying around for the last two years. I shattered my leg. Right. And. Uh, uh, I, I found out I had leukemia. It was caused by leukemia. I don't have it anymore. Um, yeah, I'm in remission. They found out I was... Um, they actually discovered it after I had went into remission. Uh, I had AML. And uh, uh, they... Uh, my doctor told me uh, to uh, keep doing what I was doing, which was smoking pot every day. He said that was... You know, he was he was one of those cool doctors that you get, right? And yeah, I think he was actually a patient, and uh, about cannabis patient. That's what's nice about being. Well, by you are way ahead of us here in pot. Well, um, that's not for lack of trying. Uh, you know, that's one of the reasons I'm thinking. I'm actually thinking about relocating here to New York. It's been on my mind um, because you know I'm a I'm a veteran organizer and I've been doing this shit a long time and I know how things work. And I know how to get people organized, and I know how to make things happen. And um, we have plenty of people in San Francisco that do that, because um, we have a long tradition of uh, of activism in San Francisco. And uh, generally, we're out there before everybody else. And uh, so there's lots of good people that are doing good stuff. And New York here, uh, I feel like there's a lot of good people, like all these great people out here. But the infrastructure of the group needs to be. It needs to be worked on a little bit. We have to clean out politically. Yeah. Well, it was like one of these things. Is like I came here to do a. Uh, one of the reasons I came here was to do a television show in the Manhattan Neighborhood Network, right? Because we were supposed to have this whole day where we were broadcasting, right? And there was only one guy named Ananda or Nan who was doing it, and I guess he was overwhelmed because I told him to call me, right? Make sure you call me to. to that's the way. I mean, you could send me an email. That's fine, but calling me is a way. Personally, I get to know you, right? And if you would have called me, I could have uh, staffed the whole studio with people that I know right here in New York that are technically proficient. So uh, I'm thinking about this, and, and it's like part of the reason why I need to be here. I know there's a lot of people here 
But New York doesn't have the anarchist and the anti-authoritarian uh, the anti-authoritarian tradition that San Francisco has, right? I mean, we had huge general strikes there back in the 30s. You know, I mean, it's the 60s, 70s, the 80s. You know, and and it's not here. You know, too much political or too much uh, uh, corporate power here. Yeah. Right yeah, and things get suppressed pretty quickly. I don't know. I, time is. Yeah, we're taking a break here, folks. Most of my viewers haven't even checked in yet. They're on San Francisco time. Ooh. Yeah, love doing this. This gets me out. I get to go to a lot of events. I'll be here until Thursday. I'm working with my buddy Zen. We're doing some video projects too. So I need to. I like. I love New York. It's a great city. It's the only city that rivals San Francisco for pure filth. You know, like garbage and everything, right? Like San. I think San Francisco is dirtier than, than New York. Well, it used to be the other way around. Yeah. But New York's smellier than San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've smelled some smells here in New York that I can't classify. Yeah, no. And I got a honker that, like, That's you know. because it's a mixture of a lot of things. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the, the most highly urbanized area in the United States. And then second is San Francisco. So. Yeah. We're getting a, uh, we're going to have a, we're getting a thousand foot tower. Finally, after years of fighting it, right, that they finally stuck one in. <laughs> and then they made a, well, they do what they always say. Well, we're not going to build any more skyscrapers in your great city, blah, blah, blah. Right, because they're bad for the city, to be honest, all these skyscrapers. Like, they don't really bring any income into the city that much. Um, and they're really, really hard on the environment and the surrounding. And not just, right, the city here, uh, but also in the surrounding areas, because you have to provide for water and power and even though New York has a pretty good infrastructure, it still is draining and the infrastructure here is, 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 is in bad shape. Right. And the old and the uh and that's one of the big secrets here. You know, you think it's good, but okay. it's uh, it's old, it's uh, a lot of it's under it's all underground all that stuff is falling apart. Well I was I was very uh dis disappointed with the lack of uh, disabled access on the subway. Uh there is hardly any, you know. And uh, I could probably make a living here as a uh, ADA legal support guy, going around to all these different places. You know, because I already met a couple of lawyers since I've been here, right? And I know a bunch in San Francisco, and they're just like, you know, they're they're licking their chops over ADA stuff, right? You know, and that. Yeah, well, everybody makes money out of it, and the disabled people get their ramp, and. Uh, because, well, you know, in San Francisco, that's why I say things are a little more advanced there. You know, it's like, uh, but we have a different, we have a different spirit there. Not everybody has it, but there's a lot of people, right? It's already started. Right in front. All the museum. If you want to go, if you want to go, you go now. Oh, there's people over there in front of the museum. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. This is a live stream. I want to hear Jill if she's over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, it's good talking to you. Nice to meet you. And your name was again? Will. Okay, Will. Have a good one. W-I-L. All right. Will. All right, take care. Not much interest to going to the front of the museum, it looks you like. Look like a card player? Oh, a little bit. Oh. Two shades of greed. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm with Old Banking and Occupy, and we created a deck of cards about how we're being dealt Swindled. with. Swindled. Oh, this is great. Find this very oh, thank you very much. Enjoy. Thank you. Anyone you open them up? We'll show the public. Uh, thank you. What's your name, sir? Jerry. Jerry, you from New York? Yes. Okay, great. I'm Clark, and I'm from San Francisco. Oh, that's my hometown. Oh, okay. Cool. From Oakland originally. Okay. 
Okay. So what are you doing out here? It's um, bothering people. Uh, well, I'm out here for Occupy Wall Street yeah. and uh, a little bit of uh, that and a vacation. Good. And I'm, uh, my family lives in Baltimore, so I'm going to go back with them after I'm done here. Very good. And uh, I organized down in Washington, D.C. as well. And so I'm Washington, uh, New York, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. How's it going in San Francisco? Uh, we still have an occupation in front of the Federal Reserve. That's good. Although it's mainly uh, younger kids and they're homeless, they really don't have anywhere to go. Yeah. But they're fighting it out with the police tooth and nail every day. Yeah. And uh, so far they're winning. You know, they're they're out there. Just by persevering, they're winning. Yeah, because uh, they don't really have, you know, it's... But they've, uh, what happened was that they, um, they've been, like, isol isolated from the rest of the Occupy groups in San Francisco. Yeah. Because there's quite a few now. Right, that splintered off after the main camp was broken up, yeah. and I really feel sad. Sorry, sad for the 101 market people because uh, they don't want to interact with other groups. They feel like the people should just come down to 101 and do Occupy, yeah. and it's not the way it works. You know, uh, Huffington Post. There's a writer by the name of Safi Kanako. And this is you. That's me, Jerry Ashton. Okay, good. Good. I'll send you a, a yeah, link so you know what to do. Right. Okay. But there was a real sad article about Occupy in the Huffington Post. And you know, if you want to look that up. Yeah, I know how post. Yeah. I quit, uh, I kind of quit going to it after she, uh, they got snapped up by AOL. It has an effect in the politics. Okay. Or not. We'll have to check it out. I've been, I'll have to go back to there again. It's just payday loans, huh? I haven't had. There's the snowball. Ah, uh, here we go. These cards are amazing. I know. I can't wait to like. Wow, they're cool. Let's check this out. Let's just pull one out. Oop. That, one. that was very nice. Hey, thanks a lot, Jerry. There we go. And it says uh, accounting tricks, off sheet, off balance sheet vehicles, Enron's favorite technique adopted by the banks. Move the bad when the people aren't looking. Okay. Yeah, these are great. Yeah. Are they great? Mm -hmm. Enjoy. Definitely. Thank you. Here you go. There we go. Mountain of debt. We got a. Yeah, uh, we got a boulder of debt. Oh. Oh God, I'm so sleepy. We have something similar in San Francisco, but we don't have 52 cards yet. We don't have 52 cards yet. <laughs> we got like, um, we did cards on the banksters. Yeah. And we got the, uh oh, battery's getting low, folks. Uh oh. All right, uh, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it and go, let it go as long as I can. We're almost dead. Oh, we're over two hours. Okay, for everybody that's watching, uh, since I'm over two hours and I don't want to, I don't want to take a chance on losing this footage, I'm going to uh, stop it. I'm going to put a new battery in. It's going to take about three minutes to four minutes for me to reboot and everything. So hang around. I'll be right back, and I'll definitely give you more coverage from Occupy Wall Street here in Lower Manhattan. So give me a couple of minutes, and I'll be right back.